What is up guys? Today I want to talk to you about five books that help me come up in the HVAC industry. I think they can help you too if you're new. These books are critical to early development of key concepts that just don't get taught in the field. I know I just said five, but I've probably thrown a couple honorable mentions as well. There's just too many that I think are valuable to this industry. But really quick guys, first, this episode here today is brought to you by Yep, our friends at Solder Weld, they bring great products to the HVAC industry, such as the Multisaw, low temperature dissimilar metal solder. So this stuff has a 20,000 PSI rating with a 350 degree melting point. It bonds all dissimilar metals and is best for aluminum to copper, brass, bronze, steel, stainless steel, galvanized steel, pot metal, pewter, and it'll even bond to lead without melting the lead. It's low temperature and high bonding strength. One of the only rods of its kind, it's excellent for the classic car restoration industry as well as HVAC. I would really suggest that you guys give them a shot, ask for them in your supply houses if they're not already there. And in the meantime, go to www.solderweld.us, use the AK HVAC promo code at checkout for 20% off all products. All right guys, now let's get into it. Let's check those books out and see what you might wanna pick up for yourself. Yeah, I was trying to make a really cool sequence, but it's really not flying with the light. I, I can't see anything. I just lost five cool points trying to be J.J. Uh, Abrams here. So the first book up is gonna be the biggest, the heaviest, and the most comprehensive. And it's the Rack Manual, okay? It's the Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Technology Textbook, right, Dick Wurz. And you've seen this, this author featured in podcasts like the HVAC School Podcast with Brian Orr. He's been on several times as a guest. This is probably the most used textbook in the HVAC industry when it comes to community colleges. It's a fantastic book. It is overwhelming in its length, but it's something worth having on your workbench or your van or wherever it is that you study. It's one of those books that I pick up from time to time and just open up randomly to look through the chapters and see what little tidbit I can get. It's, you know, you're never gonna retain everything, but it's a fantastic reference. This next little group of books, I'm going to lump into one book category, and it's the ESCO lineup of books and references. So these books are little, short, sweet, and fantastic reading. It's something that I used a lot when I was in school. I ordered these offline. Some of them were already in the classroom, and you can read them like in an hour, each of them. So it's very easy reading, but it's on a very specific focus subject. I can't recommend those enough for guys that are trying to grasp complex con uh, concepts for the first time. The third is a general book, but it's just, you know, your local code book. This book happens to be the Kentucky Plumber's Code, and it's just because my HVAC code books are in the van right now, and this was on the shelf, but it's the concept that counts. So make sure you have your local codes with you, and it's something that you begin to read on your own time and begin to memorize as much as you can. It's something that's gonna get you, or keep you out of trouble, rather, and um, something you'll always need to stay updated on throughout your career. Pumping Away, this is by Dan Hollihan, another guest of the HVAC School podcast in the past. Um, he wrote some of the best literature that's out there on hydronics and steam and boilers. So if you guys are in the Northeast or in an area where hydronics are very commonplace, this book is a fantastic primer on the concepts that make hydronics run. This is the electricity textbook for refrigeration, heating, and air conditioning. I picked this up while I was at school as well. It's a great complement to the Racked Manual. It goes deeper into everything the Racked Manual covers when it comes to electricity, but it goes more in depth, more detail for those concepts that didn't quite click the first time you read about them. It's a really good book. 
Can't recommend that enough as well. For guys that are going into commercial and industrial heavier type equipment, this Understanding Motor Controls textbook is another book that goes even further into electrical concepts when we're getting into the world of motor starters, controls, drives, and other types of components in that lane. Hey, remember that from the beginning of the video? That was a Variac, which is a fancy word for an auto transformer, which is another fancy word for a very oversized overkill dimmer for a Edison light bulb if you wanna make a nerd lamp. And I would have never known how to build that if I hadn't read Understanding Motor. That's a lie. It's actually, it was actually pretty, pretty easy to make that. And guys, I said I'd do a couple little honorable mentions. Here's a few of my favorites. Then we have the ASHRAE manual. So the ASHRAE manual is not mandatory reading for guys that are just getting into the trade, but I think it's a fantastic book to eventually get. Um, it really helps to become a member of ASHRAE. I am not currently. I do plan on at some point but you get these manuals as a part of your membership. Otherwise, they are a little pricey, but there's no better reference for the ASHRAE guidelines for the tables and some of the engineering type data that you may be interested in understanding later on. Probably not something you're gonna have in the van with you for service calls, but something definitely to keep on the desk back at the house or at your office. The overall point of this video, guys, is to make sure you understand just to keep getting books. So some of these books probably aren't even in circulation anymore. You see this rigging book I got from when I was an apprentice at the Union Hall. The other book here is on pneumatics. This one's probably not even written anymore in publication, but the point is to collect and hoard this kind of stuff when you can get your hands on it. It is priceless because a lot of this technology is no longer dominant, but having the ability to work on it is still crucial and it will set you apart. That's what all this is about, is setting you apart. You can get by in this trade without reading tons, but the more you do, the more you will outshine the people around you that choose not to. And probably the last and, and, and most important one here is just your install manuals that you get every time you do an install. Keep those manuals, read them through, keep them long after the job is done because that is stuff that you won't get from the textbooks in school. That is the manufacturer's guidelines. So that stuff is specific to that equipment and things that you can always reference back to when you come across that equipment in the field. Besides, if you're a nerd like me, it's just cool as when you can look back at manuals that are really old. So you see these York manuals that I took from our shop that were gonna get thrown out. These are chiller manuals from the 60s and 70s, so they're in mint condition. It's like I'm a comic book collector, but for manuals, like a loser. So guys, we're wrapping up. These are the five books that I recommend, plus a couple extra on top to keep your mind sharp and to stay learning, and I hope that you got something out of it. Most of these books, I'm gonna try to link below if you do have a hard time finding them yourself to give you access to them if you wanna pick them up for your own library. And guys, with that, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one.